Hey guys, Insomni here with some more AFK Arena. Today we are back on the test server and the two brand new heroes, the Celestial and the Hypogen heroes are up. So let's go ahead and look at them. We have run through their skills before, but we'll review them really quick. What we did not know was the signature items and the furniture that was going to come with them. So as you can see here, Zephyril is up. Lightning Purge is his ultimate ability. Um, Zephyril teleports to the side of the battlefield, which has the most enemies, so he can be allied, he can be enemy, and fires seven powerful bolts of lightning across the battlefield, de dealing 180% damage per lightning bolt to each enemy that the bolts strike. Level three is 200 damage. So we'll check this out when we go ahead and test the hero. I'm not gonna run through the full arena of trials, but I do wanna see how it looks, because I believe it is gonna be just like Cirrus's waves, but that is yet to be seen. Second ability, which is Thunderstorm. Zephyrus su summons a Thunderstorm that exists for 18 seconds, which strikes the enemy target near nearest to Zephyrus every four seconds, dealing 150% damage to them and causing them to be temporarily stunned. Level four takes it up to 170% damage and level three, the Thundercloud equals, deals additional damage equal to 5% of the enemy target's max health. Additionally, Additional damage cannot exceed 200% of Zephyr's attack, attack rating, so definitely going to be stronger with the level 3 and the level 4 ability for Thunderstorm. So that seems like it's going to be one of the main damage dealers, and it does provide a stun, which is awesome. Lightning Arc, Zephyril teleports behind the enemy that is closest to the, his allied side of the battlefield and knocks them down, them to the ground, dealing 230% AoE damage to the target and nearby enemies. Simultaneously, Zephyro receives a shield that is able to mitigate damage equal to 8 of his own attack rating. So he's going to be really based on attack rating. So the higher the attack rating, the more shield he is going to get out of this, which has a duration of 500% seconds. Not sure if that's a typo. They'll probably fix it. This is on the test server, as we know. When the shield exists, Zephyro's uses melee attacks, and once the shield disappears, Zephyro shall immediately return to his original position. So wherever he was on the battlefield, value of the shield is increased to 700%, and damage is increased to 250%. Final ability, which is Static Charge. During battle, when enemies are dealt damage, they are simultaneously electrified for 10 seconds. When electrified, enemies are dealt damage that exceeds 12% of their maximum health. The electric shall be transferred to the nearest closest enemy, causing the nearby enemy to lose health that is equal to 30% of the initial attack. Level 2 electric transfer now occurs when damage exceeds 10%. Then enemy target receives 50% of the initial attack damage. That could be a very, very powerful damage over time effect that he is going to bring with the static charge ability. Very, very unique static charge, but very powerful overall. So this is the big thing. We wanted to look at their signature items. Signature item. After using the ability Lightning Arc, Zephyr's normal melee attacks become even more powerful, dealing 60% damage nine times to the enemy, also interrupting their action, which interrupting the action, just like a stun, is very, very big when it comes to the heroes. So his zeal ability is going to be strong. Damage is increased to 70%, 80%. And then plus 30, the ability Thunderstorm targets an additional enemy target. So you're actually going to be able to hit two heroes with Thunderstorm, which is going to be really, really strong. Because remember, this is the one that stuns. So having his plus 30 signature item to stun two heroes at a time. And with the clouds staying up there for 18 seconds, if you have two clouds, that will be very, very powerful. Overall, it seems like he's going to be a pretty good da uh, damage dealer. Exclusive Furniture. When an enemy deals damage to Zephyro, they are stunned for 0.5 seconds. Stunned enemies cannot be stunned again for 8 seconds. Not sure if this stunned enemies cannot be stunned for 8 seconds includes um, stuns that are produced by the Thunderstorm or by the Thundercloud. This ability shall still stun its target even if the damage was completely mitigated by the enemy. So even if the damage is mitigated, so even if they're shielded, it is still going to stun them, which is pretty powerful again. His 9 of 9 piece, when an enemy deals damage to Zephyr, they are stunned for 2 seconds. So wow, that, that is a long stun whenever they deal damage. Stunned enemies cannot be stunned again for 8 seconds. This ability shall still stun its target even if the damage was completely mitigated. So essentially, if a hero's on him and they're doing damage to him, they can be stunned for two seconds. 
every eight seconds, not including the rest of the team, such as Pharrell, um, anyone that is providing additional CC, additional stun, could make him really, really powerful. Seems like he is going to be a strong, strong hero. Like I said, we're not going to run through the full arena of trials right now, but I do want to see him in action. So there he teleports. There's the 18 second thunderstorm ability. And it looks like he just shoots him kind of in a line. So similar to Cirrus, but look at the thunderstorm ability. Very, very cool overall. We'll slow this down just a little bit. So there he teleports. There's the ultimate ability. So it burns through pretty much targets in front of him. As you can see there, it hit two targets, burned right through them. There's Thunderstorm ability, electrocuting heroes pretty consistently. There's the ultimate, so very, very cool ability. Um, I think he is going to bring a lot of damage, not only bringing his own shield to increase the survivability, but I think overall his damage is going to be high. It's going to be very, very substantial. Also do remember with the Celestial Heroes, because they are Celestial, um, they can form a five person team. So essentially you can get the bonuses from having Celestials in the team, just like when we use Taylene. So you can get the four set bonus easier, the five set bonus easier with the heroes that you have, the faction bonuses that they have. So the other hero, of course, is his wife, which is Lucrita. So let's go ahead, we'll run through her skills really quick. Uh, ungodly Defiance. The first time Lucreta uses her ultimate ability, she absorbs her two revolving skulls, absorbing their energy until the end of battle. After absorbing the skulls, Lucreta's life leech is increased by 40, and her energy recovery rate is increased by 50%, so 50% bonus to her energy recovery rate. Each time she uses her ultimate ability, deals 280% AOE damage to nearby enemies, as you can see here, 320% on level three. Hellfire uh, flames encircle Lucrita for 10 seconds, dealing 60% damage every 0.5 seconds to enemies in close proximity to her. Enemies affected by Lucrita's flames have their defense rating decreased by 15% for two seconds. The ability cannot be stacked. So when she has this ability up, the 15% defense reduction is a pretty big, pretty, pretty significant um, Debuff, not only is she the Ranger class, which is very, very powerful in itself, but the ability to kind of increase her damage to the defense reduction is similar to what Leica does with the defense break. I believe Leica's is 25% though. So Lucreta is only 15%, but still brings the defense reduction, which is very strong. Death Wish, Lucreta marks the enemy that has dealt the highest total amount of damage and haunts them, hunts them until their death. While hunting down the enemy target, Lucrita receives 50% less damage from the target. If the enemy of formation includes Zephyril, Lucrita shall prioritize her attacks against Zephyril above all other enemies. Damage to hunted enemies increased by 40% during the hunting phase. So depending how long this phase lasts, which it says um, until death. So essentially until she kills the target, she's going to hunt them doing 40% more damage, making her sort of a finishing hero um, because she can actually just follow a hero. Hopefully it prioritizes heroes, well, the enemy that has dealt the highest total amount of damage. So pretty much the strongest hero is gonna be the one that is gonna be marked with Death Wish that she will go ahead and fight. Final ability, which is Twin Tears. When positioned on the front line, the Skull of Treachery is activated, raising Lucrita's dodge by 50 points and tenacity by 20. When positioned in the back line, the Skull of Destruction is activated, increasing attack speed by 15, crit amplification by 30. The effects of both skulls are simultaneously active after her uses her ultimate ability for the first time. So it seems like a little bit of a scaling. So as long as she can ult the first time, you're going to get defense, you're going to get tenacity, you're going to get attack speed, you're going to get crit amplification. And then from her ultimate ability, you're also going to get life leech and you're going to, get, going to get energy recovery rate, which is crazy. On the front line, activating the Skull of Treachery increases dodge and tenacity. On the back line, the Skull of Destruction raises attack speed and crit. Wow. So she is going to be really the one to look for. Um, 
Because, I mean, she she just seems like not only is she going to be a ranger, not only is she going to be an assassin, she is going to be able to buff herself with twin terrors and ungodly defiance by a ton. So so she she is going to be able to buff herself literally through through the roof with the amount of so she's adding dodge, she's adding tenacity, she's adding attack speed, she's adding crit, she's adding life leech, she's adding energy regen. We haven't even gotten to her signature item or her furniture yet, but overall she just seems like it is going to be an absolute priority to get her. Signature item, when any non-summoned ally dies, Lucreta gains 100 energy points. Wow. So she is getting energy just from a non-summoned ally dying. When any non-summoned ally dies, Lucreta gains 200 energy points. When any non-summoned ally, Lucreta's attack rating is increased by 30% for 12 seconds. This ability can be stacked. So it seems like if you're fighting against her, you're going to have to take her out, out really, really fast. If she can ult, if you start killing heroes, um, especially if she has the Death Wish ability on a hero that she's changing or chasing, attack rating is increased by 30%. And then finally, the plus 30, her attack rating is increased by 50% by 12 seconds. This ability can stack. So essentially, let's say you have two heroes that die together on your team. Lucrita's attack rating is increased by 100% by for 12 seconds. Not only the 100% is if she's hunting an enemy, she's doing another 40% increased damage to them already, meaning that she will just literally rip through heroes really, really fast. And she does have her own life leech. So even if you have her in a support role, um, running with Rowan, running with the twins, it's going to be crazy. I, she is going to be just absolutely crazy to use to see how fast she can burn through heroes. And her furniture bonus, finally, when enemies have used their ultimate ability for a combined number of two times, so we need two enemies to ult, the effects caused by flame of ability help, flames of the ability Hellfire are strengthened. Enemies that are damaged by the flames have their health recovery rates reduced by 50%. When the enemies have used their ultimate for the combined number of seven times, the flame effects of the ability Hellfire are strengthened and the flame shall no longer disappear. Enemies that are damaged by Hellfire will be unable to use their ultimate abilities. So similar to Aziz, she is going to cancel out their ultimate abilities and Hellfire will be permanent, meaning she is going to have a permanent flames going around her with the defense reduction permanently with her furniture which seem to me it just seems like this is going to be super super powerful especially like I said earlier being of the rangers tree ranger tree um she is just going to be able to dominate um heroes overall which which is kind of crazy so let's see here. I don't think the full trial is up. We just have this one. But I, I want to see her actually here. So pairing her just, I'm thinking with some tanks. Um, let's put her in the back line so we can actually get, and I know this isn't an ideal formation, but I want to see kind of what she's going to do here. So there's her little skull up in the back. And there she is attacking. She's attacking Zolrath. He goes back to his little um teleportation it looks like gorvo just got knocked down when in his turtle shell we have mahira here and i want to see some of the ultimates go off which now i believe so zorath just it looks like left again i think zorath is going to restart the battle here So again, there is her little skull in the back. She has a little skull in the front too. But it looks like there she's hunting. So it looks like she's on Mahira right here. And there was her ultimate ability. So she absorbed the skulls. And now it looks like there's a skull just hanging out here in the back. Even though that's not exactly where she is. Of 
course, we got Orthos doing his alt. Let's see. Now, she, she's. let's see how much damage she takes. Nakaruru, of course, doing some stuns. She's doing some stuns. So let's see if she can get him down. All right, so let's take a look at her damage. I know that was kind of a long battle. But looking here, th this is kind of what I'm talking about. So not only does she have the ability with Life Leech to heal herself, um, if you look at most of the heroes, Nakaruru did 1.8 million. She did 6.14 million damage in this trial. Not only does she, it, it just seems like overall, um, especially in the lockout team, I could see her replacing Aziz just out of the sheer damage. I could see her replacing Taylene. If you get her to live, it seems like once she starts getting her abilities off, once she scales a little bit, she is going to be super, super difficult to kill once she has some of the abilities up and some of the scaling up. So very, very cool hero. Now, I have heard that you're going to be able to choose one of two. Most people have said um, Lucrita is going to be the one definitely that they're going for. I would second that notion. Looking at her signature item, looking at her furniture, looking at her abilities, um, it seems overall she is going to be the hero to really prioritize the build. Being maxed out with her signature item, with her furniture, just seems like it is going to be absolute powerhouse with her. When it comes to Zafriel, it seems like he's going to be good, but overall, not too impressed with all of his skills. He does have a little stun, just because if you have to choose one of the two, I would definitely go with the um, Hypogen hero. Also, with him being a mage, a lot of people don't build the mage tree or don't build it very, very high because the ranger tree does so much more damage, even though he has continuous damage with his um, Thunderstorm ability. Seems like he, he is a pretty cool looking hero, but overall the hero that you want to get is of course Lucrea. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. Very cool to see the signature items and the furniture for the new hero. Again, it just seems like they are gonna be, she is going to be so powerful and people are going to prioritize building her first. Um, just because even the sheer stats, like I had said earlier, with the life leech and the energy recovery, with the dodge, the tenacity, with the attack speed, with the crit amplification, um, seems like she is just going to be very, very difficult to deal with. So let me know in the comments who you are picking, which one you're actually going to go with. And as always, thank you guys for watching.